Because on my dad's side, they all... Hello, everyone. So mm. for those of us Hello. joining us so on Hi. our live pre-show for the tragedy of Miriam, uh, hopefully you will all enjoy this next half hour of Q&A with the director of our KWLT's very first Black Box radio series, Diana Lobb. We are also joined today by some of the voice actors in the show. We have Amy. Bobby, Lynn, Alec, and Joe present with us today. So thank you for being here, everybody. Uh, thank you for hosting. Thank you. You're welcome. So before we get started with the questions, uh, I just wanted to do a quick round table. Diana is the director, but I'm hoping that the actors can just let our audience know who they'll be playing in the show. So I think we'll go clockwise. We'll start with Amy first. Hey, um, well, I'm Amy Sensenstein, and I play Miriam, uh, Herod's second wife, in the show. Perfect. I Thanks, guess I'm Amy. next. And I'm, you uh, are. Yeah, and I play Herod, the, the villain uh, of the piece. <laughs> My name is Lynn McEntee, and I'm Alexandra, and also the chorus. I'm Bobby Robert, and I'm Salome, Herod's sister, and Constabular's wife. My name is Joe Go. I play Constabrus and Salome's whipping post. <laughs> Can you tell we've yeah. got actors in the house? <laughs> well, I think we'll go ahead. Oh, hello. Bonjour, uh, Ashley de Montréal. Merci pour nous avoir rejoint. We have a viewer from Montreal here joining us tonight. Hi, so Ashley. I think we'll... <laughs> We'll go right ahead and jump in with the questions. So our first bonjour. question bonjour, that we have today is to Diana. So Diana, as the first director of KWT's first radio show, we're wondering what was your most unexpected challenge for this project? I think it was in um, conceptualizing where I needed to spend my time. With a live show, you spend a lot of time with blocking. So deciding where the actors stand or perform relative to the audience. So you're thinking about sight lines and can the audience see what's being done on stage? That time in a radio show needs to be put into uh, processing the audio files. So thinking about, okay, do I need this re-recorded? Do I, how am I going to put this together and leveling? And what sound effects do I want? And my advice to somebody thinking about taking on a radio show would be to really give yourself time to work with the audio files and find a good sound engineer. Um, Alex McVitie was our sound en engineer, and <laughs> the show wouldn't exist without him. He was brilliant. Um, so basically pay attention to the back end, because in a radio show, that's where the work is. And that's it for Thanks, me. Diane. Yay, thank you. Was there anything that you found during this process that you enjoyed more than you expected? I think the rehearsals. It was so nice to see people and talk to people who were interested in the same kind of things. Um, I mean, definitely the pandemic is so isolating that um, 
the rehearsal process is a way to really um, reconnect with the people who share the same passions you do. So that was that was really delightful for me. Great. Um, we actually just got a comment from Facebook. Apparently, this is KWT's second radio show. Um, the first was directed and written by Jean-Paul Jovanov. Thank you for that comment, Paula. Do you know which radio show it was? If you don't mind posting the answer, that would be great. We'll come back to that in a bit. Thanks, Diana. I'm sure we'll circle back around to you for some more questions soon, but let's move on to a question for Lynn and Bobby. Um, given that this was a radio production as opposed to a live theater show, how is the rehearsal process different for you from that process of rehearsing for an in-person show? Bobby, you wanna go first? Sure. Um, I found it fun and a brand new challenge because it was very, very challenging. Um, I'm a physical actor, so a lot of my uh, emotions come out in, in my body and, and trying to get that just in my voice was a little difficult and and rehearsing without um you know face to face eye to eye stuff was was really hard <laughs> a real challenge how about you lynn um, yeah, no, good question, actually. Uh, for myself, um, I found uh, sort of a shining light and the uh, sort of a deeper connection with people, if you will. Um, I do love the physicality of being in the space together, but in the same sense, uh, people speaking to the screen and uh, conveying their emotions that way. And uh, I just found that very uplifting because it is a very isolating time. So putting on a production like this, um, you know, piggybacking on some of the things that Diana had said before, um, you know, is, is kind of neat. It's very, very different, but I did really enjoy the rehearsal process very much of bringing it to life um and well, one I, of the things that i really loved was yeah. having to imagine what was going on physically you know like like right. when when i have a you know a ma pretty major disagreement with my husband and in my <laughs> head i picture it as quite physical uh, like getting in each other's face and and maybe even holding wrists and and getting you know yeah. close and, and yeah yeah it was pretty pretty uh so so I had, to, I had a picture in my mind okay like I, i'm gonna hit him and he's gonna grab my wrist and then we're gonna have this conversation face to you know nose to nose but when you're not actually doing that it, it's really hard to convey it just in the voice yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I found a lot of laughter in the process too with people. I think yes. all of us were giving up the, um, you know, the fact that it is, was on Zoom and we were just kind of playing around with it and uh, figuring it all out as we came out of the starting gates, right? For the, right. The and it, it was really nice, you know, like usually when you rehearse, your your schedule is taken over by, by the show. And it was nice. You didn't have to, you know, spend the half hour driving there and, you know, getting dressed and... <laughs> <laughs> putting makeup on um so yeah you could just you know finish dinner and come down to the the room and so that was kind of cool and yeah and that, that could be kind of disarming too because you see that dog running in the background mm -hmm. or the kids while they're getting ready for bed or <laughs> those kind of things and i think that but, that's... but it's also nice to see everyone in their own space which right? is kind of cool yeah yeah it was really cool yeah very enjoyable process just loved it and um... i wish it could have lasted longer I wish we could have rehearsed the like another two weeks at least. Absolutely, it would have felt, would have yeah, felt way more comfortable. Way more comfortable. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, it was great. It was awesome working with you and everyone. It was lots of fun. Interesting. Do, yeah, fun. Would any of the other yeah. actors like to chime in on this question, or do you think you also would have enjoyed having a longer rehearsal process? I don't necessarily think. think really, oh, sorry. No, I don't. I don't. I don't necessarily think a longer rehearsal process. I probably would have enjoyed uh, the again the the physical part of it, being around people. Uh, I think any longer, uh, you might not have found the groove that we were looking for. Everybody was able to attain a, a very very specific uh, kind of mentality in a very very short time, uh, and I think drawn out any longer, we might have lost that. Mm, interesting, Chas motivated, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
No, it was great. Uh, just lots of laughter I found. I think it was very forgiving. And I, I think for anybody that's maybe never done something like that before, it might be a good way to dip their feet in the water um, because it is because uh, sometimes people don't like arriving in the space until they perhaps maybe have more experience in doing so, whether it be a youth that's never tried that before, or, you know, someone who's 85 who's never tried it before, kind of gives them a little bit of a buffer, right, behind the screen. So, but as they get more comfortable, they may, you know, enjoy the, uh, the being an in-person process. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Uh, so we have a question from our audience who is curious about the technical side. And uh, they are interested in knowing if you recorded the Zoom session, captured your audio and then edit, and if each actor recorded their parts separately and send in the audio files. Diana, uh, if you want to take this one. Uh, we did record the Zoom sessions uh, and capture, well, we captured the audio and the video. Uh, Mostly for my review, but also for possible uh, promotional pieces, which didn't happen because I'm really bad at editing video. Um, <laughs> now, the, the actors did individually record their pieces um, and then submit them. And then the sound engineer um, knitted them all together. Uh, there were some challenges with knitting it all together because everybody had different microphones and different recording situations. So that did mean that Alex had to do uh, perhaps more work in leveling between the voices than if everybody had been recording in the same place with the same equipment. But this is the reality of, of, I think our cast was spread pretty much all over Ontario from Ottawa to Waterloo and side to side. So we, we were dealing with a very widely displaced cast. And this is the first time we've done it. So. Yeah. So some of this was, let's just do her and, and see how this works out. Yeah. And that question actually ties in really well with one that we have for Alex and Amy. Um, what was the recording experience like for each of you since you did record things individually using different technology? Um, we'll start with Amy and then move on to Alex, if you don't mind. Um. So I think what was great is that Diana set us up with like a toolkit to kind of um, help us in that process. So um, our last Zoom rehearsal was recorded so we could like refer back. So I know for me, as I was like rehearsing and getting ready to record, that's something I referred back to so that you could kind of like remember what it was like in rehearsal and what it is to, in a way, play off another actor. Um, but, you know, ultimately you're by yourself of uh, recording so I think um, it was really helpful to have like play notes and like uh, rehearsal notes as part of that um, and then also not giving into the temptation of like over like always trying to pursue that like perfect take or whatever the fact that you can go back and fix things that you know you nitpick at or whatever it's hard to kind of be fully satisfied with something before you send it off I think to theaters often referred to as like the actor's medium and then film is the director's medium uh, just because there's so much control in film that happens in editing and I think in this it was kind of like in a way both but ultimately you had to send it off and it went into other hands to like weave it all together so it was there were like challenges about it obviously but obviously to a really great experience just getting to do that. Take it away, Alex. Yeah, well, the experience wasn't so bad for me as I'd, I'd already been involved in several other virtual productions. I was using exactly the same computer for the Zoom meetings, for rehearsals and performances. I was used to projecting my, my voice just so far to reach the inbuilt microphones because I didn't use my headset. And I was used to hearing others through the inbuilt speakers and seeing all the little pictures up on the screen. The, using that, not using the headset, is much less confining. and meant I could see my script and other actors at the same time during rehearsals. And since the recording was done alone, I was able to run several tries 
before. Uh, I was happy with the result, and I hope other people are going to be happy too. But um, the main challenge, and I think this was for everybody, uh, was the script, was the language, because um, it's very difficult to work out just where to put the emphasis in those long, long speeches with all the, all of them made up of iambic pentameters, and we had to avoid getting into that sing-song mode with the rhymes. Um, we didn't learn a lot. I didn't learn my lines. I mean, I rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed, but even right at the very last moment, I was still reading the script because there was so much, um, so many risks in using the wrong word or getting yourself lost in those things. But it was a great, great experience. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing it again sometime. <laughs> And it oh. seems these days I, I'm doing much more voice work than, than anything else, but so is everybody else. Well, we love to hear that you want to come back <laughs> once we get the next one going. <laughs> so I think I'll direct my next question to Joe, uh, which is, this is a great segue from Alex saying that he hadn't really learned all his lines. You were able to have the script there in front of you and like, see the other voice actors in your rehearsals. So, Joe, I'm wondering what the experience of learning your lines for this production was like for you, given that it was a radio show and you're able to record in the comfort of your own home. Uh, very, very different for me. Uh, it was the first time I'd ever done uh, a radio broadcast, uh, at least in this format. Uh, I'm very, very accustomed to learning my lines very, very quickly. I've got a, I'm sort of naturally adept uh, at retaining uh, dialogue very, very quickly. I'm I envy you. Productions. I know it's ask me what, I, you know, what com about a conversation I had a week ago when I have no idea. Right. But, you know, ask me to recite the dialogue between Carrie Elways and Mandy Potemkin during the princess bride sword fight scene. And I can tell you a verbatim line for line, you know, it's some of us have minds that work that way. Uh, so I'm, I'm accustomed to coming off script generally before most people, but for this, uh, it was a little more of a, a relaxed approach. Uh, I didn't worry so much about memorizing the lines uh, in so much as learning the intonation, uh, where the emphasis needs to go, as Alex said, trying not to fall into that uh, sort of sing-song cadence uh, of rhyming, figuring out, you know, where to go loud, where to go quiet, uh, you know, how to, how to feel them out, uh, so to speak. So going into it, uh, I hadn't read the script coming into it. Uh, our very first rehearsal was actually, uh, it, it, it was a cold read for me. It was, it was the very first time I was actually reading the script. Uh, and then as we went through it, sort of picking up on how everybody was reacting to those lines, the responses to them uh, began to dictate. Uh, I would figure out my mind, okay, I need to tweak that line a little. little. Uh, Diana would always, was always very, very good at figuring out, tweak that a little. Uh, you know, try pronouncing it like this or try saying it like this, you know, give it a different feeling or whatever. And uh, I think the end result came out uh, really, really well. I preferred it because then you're not constantly, you know, shuffling around for a script or going up on your lines. So I liked it. Yep. I can imagine how that would be nice. It is like yeah, having that script in your hand when you're first learning something and having to refer back to it and then that affecting the way you physically move on stage um, is obviously much different from being able to, you know, be at your computer looking at the script on the screen. So to sort of tie into that, this is going to be a round table to everyone. So I think we'll come back to Lynn and Bobby first. Um, as Bobby alluded to earlier in theater, we use our body, our facial expressions, uh, along with our voice to really convey the emotions and the expressions and the story uh, when it comes to acting. So what was it like for all of you to really only use your voice to try and get those feelings and thoughts across? As Bobby said, you know, she was doing a lot of physical acting in her own home to figure out how she wanted to do it. But uh, for all of you, really, what was that experience like trying to use just your voice to really tell the story the way that both you and Diana wanted it to come across? I think we'll start with Bobby, if that's all right. Sure. Well, like like you said, I, I actually use physical, like I put my mic up and, and you know, I'm moving around and I look at, at the person, imagine them in my head and, and, and you know, give them the line or... Um, yeah, it was just a lot of imagination. <laughs> Wait, that's, 
I was playing pretend in my bedroom. You know? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's awesome, you know, and it, that is what it is. It, it truly is that. It speaks to that. Uh, the ability to surrender yourself at the moment um, and the process of learning and growing as we go. Um, so I absolutely love that. And I love the voice, uh, the richness of the voice and being able to project uh, without the physicality of it as well, too, or just having sort of taught English and, and such um, pronunciation classes and all that. But um, I just, yeah, it just really is that if you surrender yourself to the moment and uh, you can, Bobby, I can just imagine I'm picturing you uh, running around your house or making those gestures and all of us doing the same. And uh, how cool was that, that we were willing to experiment inside the sandbox, right? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, great. Yeah, I usually have a sign up, just rehearsing, don't call the police. Right, yeah. <laughs> so the voice was awesome. I absolutely love it. And I, I actually... Um, get a sort of a rush out of that, the beauty of the voice and how we can project and use it, right? Yeah. yeah. But it was, it was like a, a completely different thing. Like, you know, doing theater and then doing this, it, it's like two, com it, it was so different. And, and I'd really like to do some more of it, you know, like yeah. not having to memorize the lines and, and the movements and, and the stage business and all that stuff was, was a real break, you know? But mm -hmm. I don't know how anybody else feels, but it just felt freeing <laughs> in a way. Yeah, experimental. And, and it is freeing for sure. And it takes you back to childhood storytelling, really, when you think yep. about it, the ability to experiment and just yeah, be. Exactly. Uh, right? I, yeah, I'm anxious so. to hear like with sound effects and all that kind of stuff. Okay. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. I think, too, when you see like footage of voice actors recording, it, it's still very physical. I think maybe the difference is all that focus and energy is still going into your voice. Like I found, yeah, like Bobby, like you, like there was still a lot of movement. I tend to be a hand talker. So, <laughs> so for me, it was great that you don't see that, but hopefully like you hear that in the performance. Um, Cause I know for me personally, like I love listening to like audiobooks, and it's just amazing to me how this whole world is created just with, just with voice. Um, but it doesn't mean that only voices used in like making that performance happen so. the hardest thing though was recording lines of dialogue when you're speaking to someone else and you're <laughs> anticipating their you know because it's it, acting is reacting mm -hmm. and when you have nothing to react to boy that, that's a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> it's like the tightrope right it's like yeah yeah yeah, for sure. You're just inserting as you go. And that's, you know, your imagination, work. you have to imagine how they're taking what you're saying and, and what they're portraying to you, how they're make, trying to make you feel and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. that, that <laughs> I, I felt kind of, you know, handicapped for sure. Mm -hmm. I imagine it a lot like uh, chastising my children when I was on the road. I used to be a... <laughs> North American truck driver, so I'd be all over East Coast, West Coast, down South, right? And I'd get calls from my ex-wife about how a kid had destroyed this or ruined that or whatever. And it's like, what do you want me to do? I'm in Arkansas. You know, like, well, right, put the kid on the phone. I'll, you know, I'll talk to him. She's three. It's fine, right? So you, you go through enough of those types of phone calls and you get really, really good at expressing what you want to express through your voice as opposed to yeah. your body because people on the highway think you're a madman when you're, you know. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's the real point. It's a roommates. fantastic exercise for the voice just mm. to see how much you can get the emotion by change of tone, change of pace, uh, change of timing in the, in the speeches. And this is what I really found for me was particularly good. I mean, I'm a lazy actor anyway. I don't like learning lines um, unless I have to. But um, not being able to pace the stage and throw yourself at people. But you know what was really missing was the audience feedback. You do not get anything back from this computer screen. Yeah, when you I think stand we, all, we can the, all agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Stand on the stage, even if there's only one person in the audience, and if you are doing a good job, you can feel mm -hmm. the emotion coming back from you. You can feel, I've got them in my hand, they are listening to me, they are emoting with me, they are laughing with me, they are crying with me. They're and understanding me. that's what me. we do not have. Yes. And with an emotional play like this, I found that was actually a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, 
this guy here, he's all over the place. <laughs> murder his wife. He doesn't want to murder his wife. You know, there's so much emotion in his speeches, and I'm doing it to the bloody computer. Excuse me, the computer. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, and when I'm recording, I didn't even get any re any response from Amy. She wasn't there when I was recording it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doing the rehearsal was fine, but uh, otherwise I'm on my own and I'm looking at this thing and saying, why are you not re re reacting to me? And that that is what the actors miss. Yeah. Because You've been married. You know what it's like to talk to a wife? Uh, oh. I, don't not listen. You know, I don't even have a wife to talk to now, okay? So I'm on my own. I've been isolated now for eight months. You know, if, mm -hmm. if any COVID virus walked in my door, it would drop dead immediately from the atmosphere, I can tell you. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, Alex, to your point and to everyone else's point, too. I felt like I, um, our rehearsal process allowed me to under, uh, have a laugh uh, on my own at home, knowing, um, let's say, uh, Joe's character uh, or, or Bobby. Uh, during the process of rehearsal, they, uh, so, you know, allowed to share themselves. So that kind of carried me while I was recording on my own, too, uh, because we had to. Uh, we were sort of thrown into it, and that was the way... We had to, yeah. but the other was ideal for sure. But I did feel that energy from you when I was at my home recording. So, yeah. I, I don't know about anybody else, but for me, one of the greatest advantages of being able to record at home as mm -hmm. opposed to being on stage around other people, whatnot, was the ability to not wear pants. <laughs> and drink wine. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we've got about three minutes left and Bernie has another question, which I think will direct to you, Diana. Um, he was wondering if the script was originally written for radio and if not, what was involved in adapting it? Um, no, this script was certainly not originally written for radio. It was originally written in 1613. Uh, it's a particular style of of drama called the closet drama so it's it's meant to be read and read aloud as sort of a a party entertainment rather than performed so when it came to adapting it to radio there wasn't really a long stretch because this was a, a play that was meant to be sat and read as we would a radio, as we would in our era, a radio drama. So there was some um, adjustment that we had to do between different, this is going to sound strange because it was written in English, different translations of the early modern English text. So early modern English, you don't have standardized spelling and you don't necessarily have the same meetings as modern questions. So uh, modern English. So occasionally in, in rehearsals, we would run into, well, you know, my version says this and your version says that. Well, they both are acceptable translations of the early modern English. So let's decide which one we like. So we worked between, I think, two, three different uh, modern translation, contemporary translations of the early modern English. And there were moments where we just sort of went, okay, no, we don't like that one, but this is acceptable <laughs> and we like this one. So we'll go with this. So yeah, a closet drama worked well. Great, thank you for that answer, Diana. Uh, well, we officially have one minute left before the tragedy of Miriam goes live. And so the broadcast <laughs> will be live on both KWLT's website and Midtown Radios. You should be able to see the ticker scrolling across the bottom of your screens right now. And you will be able to download the audio from KWLT, it will be available or in perpetuity, we hope that everyone can have a listen. If you don't have time today, then you can certainly feel free to listen in at a time of your choosing. And KWT hopes that you enjoy it. Um, again, I want to thank Diana and some of the cast for being here tonight. 
to answer people's questions um, and some from us. I hope all of you watching and listening out there have enjoyed hearing from the cast and the director. And we hope that you will enjoy our production of The Tragedy of Miriam. And that's where I'm heading off now to go take a <laughs> listen. So thank you again. Hopefully we'll see you all back in the theater at some point soon. And if not, we'll hear you on the airwaves. Thank you everyone for tuning thank in. You. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. You as well. Thank you.